Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name is Chris, and today we're going to be showing you a real world example of a very simple point to point wireless bridge. Now, this is for a customer of ours. We're going to protect the customer's information, but I did want to show you this simple point to point setup because this is about as easy as it gets to extend your network across a long distance without having to possibly pay for multiple internet connections at two sites. So if you have this sort of similar setup where you have a main location where you have internet and then a different location you know, within line of sight that maybe doesn't have internet or needs to connect to the same network as your main location. You know, this is for a barn or a separate building or, you know, multiple buildings on a campus if you're doing a point to multipoint. This is the type of thing that you want to set up. Okay, so let's take a look at AirLink. Now, this is a customer of ours. They hired us to build this point to point link and they have internet at this building here and they want to shoot that internet over to this building here. We're going to be using the NanoBeam AC Gen 2 on both sides of this link. Now this NanoBeam AC Gen 2 is a really nice little radio and it's perfect for this type of point to point link, especially if you have clear line of sight, which this customer does. They do have a few trees you can see here in the middle, but uh, they sent me a picture of what it looks like at ground level and those trees will never really get high enough to where they would block this signal. It's going to be on top of both of these buildings, so these uh, nano beams are going to be about probably 30 feet uh, or about 9 meters off the ground. So as we can see here, we have the nano beam access point on this side and we have the nano beam station on this side. I've set the height at about 30 feet, output power 25 dBm and a channel width of 40 megahertz. You can see here that we are well out of the area where the ground would be affecting this link. And the distance is about a third of a mile or about a half a kilometer. Now, if we click on signal strength, we could see that we also have a perfect signal between these two locations. So this is an ideal candidate for a point to point wireless link. Okay, so I have already set up the access point side of this wireless link. And right now it's telling me that it is looking for a firmware download. So we're going to go ahead and update the access point side. And then I will talk to you about the settings of the access point. And then we're going to set up the station side, which is a very similar process to setting up the access point. Okay, let's do the firmware update first. While that's updating, let's take a look at our network topology here. So this is incredibly simple. This is a flat slash 24 subnet that they are extending to a separate building. At the separate building, I think they're going to have a couple security cameras, some clients, maybe a wireless access point, just standard stuff on the other side. Their LAN is 192.168.10.0. And so what we're going to be doing is plugging uh, from a switch port, we're going to be going into an Ethernet search protector. This is the ETH uh, SP Gen 2, so the Ubiquiti Ethernet search protector. Keep in mind that the NanoBeam AC Gen 2 does have surge protection built into this radio itself. It says improved surge protection design right on the front of the box. But the Ethernet SP, this is really more for protecting the inside components, right? So if you have this on a pole outside and then you connect through this ETH SP, or even you could put this on the inside closer to the switch, if lightning strikes this device and it goes through that copper wire, this is supposedly going to stop that surge from damaging your network switch. So you always want to have one of these, even though this does have some level of surge protection built in. Okay, so into the Ethernet surge protector, that is grounded, and then we go out to the access point side of this point-to-point -point wireless link, which is going to be a 192.168.10.8 slash 24. And then that is going to shoot its signal over to the station side of the wireless link at 192.168.10.9 slash 24. Once again, into an Ethernet search protector on the other side and then into, uh, you know, a switch or whatever they've got going on the, on the other side. One nice thing about the NanoBeam AC Gen 2, let me get this open, is that there are two ports on this device for PoE pass-through. So you can basically power this device from the LAN uh, in the PoE inside. So this can go from a switch inside, say, the remote building. They've got a PoE switch. It comes up here, or of course you can use the PoE injector. It powers up this, this uh, device. 
but you could also have PoE out on the, on the secondary port. So that means that if you have, for instance, this up on a pole on the roof and you also wanted perhaps a camera, you could put a 24 volt passive camera strung off the second ethernet port of the NanoBeam AC Gen 2. Just makes for a really nice option. And this is not an expensive device. The NanoBeam AC Gen 2 is, I believe, MSRP of $99 or $98 on this thing. So, uh, of course, we sell it for a little bit less than that, but I do have Amazon links if you want to check this device out. You can click down in the link below. Okay, so looks like we have completely updated our access point side. Let's go ahead and log in again. There we go. Okay, so I have also connected this to UNMS, which is great for monitoring the link once I've sent it out to the client location. They're going to set it up, and then I'll be able to see the link quality and even make some changes if I need to uh, to that wireless link via UNMS, which is really, really nice. If you guys haven't checked out UNMS, I highly suggest that you do so. So let's click on Settings. And here we have it set as Access Point Point to Point. So again, this is the Access Point side of this point-to-point -point wireless link. We've set it to access point, point-to-point. -point. Notice though that this will also do access point, point-to-multipoint -point if you wanna do a point-to-multipoint -point network with these NanoBeam AC Gen 2s. And it'll even do mixed mode point-to-multipoint -point as well. I have a video on mixed mode point-to-multipoint. -point. Uh, you can search through my history or maybe I'll put a link up on the screen to that. Then I set the channel width to 40 megahertz. I crank the output power all the way up. I may adjust that after the fact if it's you know one third of a mile or half a kilometer at full output power might be screaming it a little bit too loud at each other. So I might tone that down, but we're gonna start it off at maximum power. And then we have also created a WPA2 password for the SSID. And basically, that's all of the settings that I did on the access point side, other than setting the static IP address for the device. So now, let's go ahead and set up the station side. And the way that we set this up is, first of all, by plugging it in to a 24-volt passive power supply. You can use the included 24-volt passive PoE injector, or you can plug it into a switch that'll do 24-volt passive, like this uh, 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 Unify switch that I have on my desk here. So let's power it up with 24 volt passive first, and then this has a separate management radio. So what that means is that in order to configure this device, you used to have to create a separate laptop or something that was in 192.168.1 network, and this got a default IP of 192.168.1.20. You don't have to do that anymore. Now everything can be done through the UNMS app. So you take your phone, you connect it to the wireless network that this device creates, and then UNMS automatically finds it and you can configure the static IP address and then log into the GUI to do the rest of the configuration or even configure it through the app if you want. I personally prefer to do it through the GUI. All right, first things first though, let's get this thing fired up. Okay, so device is fired up. I can see the blue power light is on. And uh, on my phone, I have a NBE-5AC-Gen2 colon and then the MAC address as a possible wireless SSID that I can connect to. And so I'm going to connect to this device's management radio. There we go, I'm connected. Now I'm not gonna show this, I've shown this UNMS setup in other videos, so I'm just gonna brush through it very quickly. But essentially I'm going to open up UNMS and after about uh, 20 seconds, we have a new device sitting here. Uh, it's very difficult to see, but it's NanoBeam AC Gen 2, and there's a little thing that says needs setup. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And I'm just gonna go straight to configuration and then network, and we're gonna set the static IP address for this device to 192.168.10.9. Okay, so we're gonna save the changes that we made, and then we're going to, it's gonna prompt us to change the default password, which is great, so we're gonna give it a new default password. We're gonna click done, and it's gonna save that configuration, and in just a moment, we should be able to connect to this device through our browser. Okay, we are now back up. We can log into this device. Hopefully, there it goes. Okay, all right, so here we go. So we are logged in. Now notice that it's saying the management radio is temporarily enabled. It will be disabled after five minutes and 35 seconds, but we don't need the management radio anymore because we're now connected. It's on the correct IP address. And so we can basically just configure everything through the onboard GUI. So we're gonna disable the management radio now. So now let's connect this up to the access point side of the point-to-point -point link. We're gonna click on settings. 
We're going to choose station point to point, and then we're going to select the SSID of the other radio. Found it, and we're going to say lock to access point. Output power is max. Distance is basically set to auto. That's perfectly fine. And then we're going to enter in the pre-shared key for the WPA2 password. Notice also here that there is a backup SSID. So you could potentially build some redundancy in here. If it can't connect to the primary SSID, you can have it connect to a secondary SSID. And the rest of this, we're going to leave defaults. We're going to click Save Changes and Disable Management Radio again. I don't know why it asked a second time, but it did. And now it's going to apply those changes, and hopefully it should connect right up. I'm, the, both these devices are in this same room, so there should be no problem with these two connecting to each other. Okay, clicking back on the dashboard now. There we go. Boom. It is now connected. And uh, at this distance, of course, it should be a little bit better uh, in the field, but we're getting about 250, uh, 200 to 250 megabits per second. Again, I hope to see that a little bit better. I'd like to see you know, about 300 or so in the field. Okay, so a couple more miscellaneous items. We're going to come over here to System, and I'm going to name this. And we're going to turn on Check for Updates so that it checks periodically for updates. Save those changes. Then we're going to pop over to Services. And we want to enable NTP, save that change. Uh, you do have to have NTP for UNMS to work properly. And then we're going to come over here to UNMS. And I'm going to grab my UNMS URL so that we can add this device to UNMS. OK, the UNMS key is in. We're going to hit Save Changes. All right, the device has now shown up in UNMS. We're going to click Authorize. And we're going to assign it out to the appropriate site. And when we click on this device in UNMS, so this is the access point side, we can see a lot of the same information and we can also make a bunch of changes to it as well. If you guys are interested in a video that goes more in depth on UNMS, let me know. Uh, I don't want to mess around too much with my live UNMS because uh, it, sh it would show a lot of client data and stuff and I don't want to spend all day masking that stuff out in, uh, in, uh, in post. Okay, so back in the station side, the last thing that we need to do is we do have another firmware upgrade available for the station. So let's go ahead and run that now. All right, so there we have it, fully updated. Everything is looking good, and it is just that simple to set up a point-to-point -point wireless bridge. And what a great idea if you, especially if you're paying for an internet connection separately with line of sight, you could throw up a couple of these devices. They're, you know, just about 100 bucks each, and now you can disconnect the internet connection at the second site and save yourself a lot of those monthly recurring charges. So it's just a great idea uh, for extending network connectivity to other areas, other buildings. And uh, yeah, we set these up all the time and they are rock solid. Okay, what do you guys think about this setup? Any questions you have, put them down there in the comments below. Of course, we do this sort of setup for customers, so if you have any wireless ISP point-to-point, -point, point to multi point type needs, let us know. We are happy to help you out with that. In addition, if you have any Ubiquity orders that are over about $2,000 worth of equipment, this one wouldn't qualify. We can usually save you some money on those orders, so contact us for your larger U Ubiquity orders as well. Okay, so hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name's Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.